The launch of the world's first 3D rocket has again been aborted. For the second time on Saturday, takeoff from Cape Canaveral in the US was halted with it just seconds to go. The Terran 1 was expected to be in Earth's low orbit for eight minutes after blast-off gathering data. The rocket was designed by the US company Relativity Space, and they want to see if this type of less costly rocket can withstand the pressures of liftoff and space flight. I'm joined now by Tanya Harrison, a fellow at the Outer Space Institute in Seattle, Washington. Thanks very much indeed for being with us. So do we have any idea of what went wrong, why it, why it didn't launch this time? They haven't announced the cause of the most recent delay. The earlier delay this week was due to uh, an issue with a valve that they were able to fix. Um, stuff like this happens a lot when it comes to launches. So it sounds like the rocket itself is in okay condition from the latest update uh, on their Twitter feed. So it might just be another few days before they get another launch attempt. And if this does go ahead, how big a development will it be for, for the space industry? It's a really big update in the way that we can construct rockets. 3D printing is not entirely new to the space sector. There, there are other companies that are using 3D printed parts, but Relativity has taken the next step to basically 3D print about 85% of the entire rocket. And so to, to make this advancement, they're able to bring down the cost, they're able to make the rocket out of fewer parts, and the launch itself is also significantly cheaper than launches have been historically. So if they're successful with this launch, it really opens up a whole new realm of the way that we can construct rockets in the future. So you, you've outlined some of the potential advantages of 3D printing for, for, the, for the industry. Well, are there any disadvantages? I would say we're going to have to see um, in terms of things like longevity of the parts. Um, really to get the cost of launches down, you want to make reusable rockets. And so that's Relativity's next goal. This, this rocket is Terran 1. Their next model, Terran R, is meant to be fully reusable. And that's really going to be like the next big step. Getting the parts cost down is one thing. Uh, getting the launch cost overall down is another. So we're going to have to see, are these rockets as reliable? Um, can the parts be reused as many times as a traditional rocket? And that'll really help us understand, is, is this going to open a lot more doors for making these 3D, 3D printed rockets in the future. Mm. And you're, and you're a, a Mars expert, aren't you? I'm, I'm just wondering what um, what you, what kind of context this, you know, what this, this potential launch, if it happens and it goes ahead and is, is successful, what does that mean in terms of Mars exploration? I mean, anything that gets the launch costs down makes it easier to get beyond Earth, so that's fantastic. But also being able to 3D print these rockets will be really helpful if we actually have humans living on Mars in the future. That way we don't have to send a lot of expensive parts from Earth, a lot of bespoke equipment to make the pieces for those rockets. You can send a lot fewer parts, a lot fewer uh, pieces of machinery that you need to make those parts to be able to start sending rockets from the Earth or from Mars back to the Earth. So a lot of really big benefits there. And what about, I mean, what do they actually, I mean, people sort of think 3D printing, you kind of envisage plastics being used. Is, is, that, is that right? Or do they use different materials with the 3D printing? You can actually 3D print with metal now, and that gets used a lot in applications like this. So I don't think you can buy like a consumer 3D printer that can do that at home. Um, so people are probably used to thinking of plastic resin printers where you see people making stuff uh, but at home but you can 3d print things in a medical context in an engineering context that are much more complicated now so it's it's pretty incredible technology thank you very much indeed uh, tanya harrison really appreciate you joining us thank you thanks so much